The Clone Wars series made the story of the Star Wars prequels a better one. Can the Mandalorian do the same thing for the Star Wars sequel trilogy? Have you seen Star Wars? <laughs> if you're like me and you grew up with the prequel films back in the early 2000s and the late 90s, then you'll remember the troubled history the films had with the fandom. At first, they were films that were hated by casual audiences and Star Wars fans alike, but as time goes on, we started to appreciate the films a lot more. And looking back, a big factor in that is the Clone Wars series that aired on Cartoon Network. Star Wars The Clone Wars filled the gap between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith, and the series went on for seven seasons, and it added to the world of Star Wars during this big galactic war. If you're someone who didn't like the relationship between Anakin and Obi-Wan in the movies because you didn't feel like it was natural, then Clone Wars is the place to go. It not only builds the relationship between these two characters, it gives the audience an emotional connection to the clones and other Jedi that we actually see in the movies. This show was a real highlight for Star Wars after the prequel films wrapped up, and now that the sequel trilogy is over and is largely not viewed favorably by all Star Wars fans or a big portion of the fan base who like them, but there's also a lot of people who don't like them. I was wondering if the Mandalorian can do what the Clone Wars did. Can the Mandalorian save the Star Wars sequels? Now, I know what some fans of the sequel films may say. The sequel trilogy doesn't need saving, and if that's your stance, that's a fine point, and you are right in some sense. But I will point out that even if you're a fan of the prequels, most would acknowledge that the Clone Wars series was a nice addition to the story. And we could say the same thing if you're a fan of the sequels, you can look at the Mandalorian series and say, this is a nice addition to the story. It's important to note that the prequel films are divisive, but the Clone Wars series is not. And I'm thinking we're going to have the same thing with the sequels and the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian doesn't need to drastically change the sequels in order to save it or redeem it. Some people believe that the Mandalorian will retcon the sequels, which will likely never happen, but the Mandalorian can lay the breadcrumbs that lead into the sequel trilogy story. And it seems like we're already getting hints of that in the show so far. The Mandalorian Season 1 worked so well because it was new characters and a new story. But since the ending of Season 1 and most of Season 2, we can see that this story has bigger implications for the overall Star Wars saga. The Mandalorian has followed what the Clone Wars did for the prequels and is expanding the lore of this new era. It's also fleshing out both sides of the conflict in some way. When we watch the sequels, we know that there is a First Order and there's a Resistance. And in The Mandalorian, we get a real good look at the New Republic trying to keep the peace in the galaxy. When Cara Dune talks to the New Republic officer, he says that there is something going on out here in the Outer Rim territories. This seems to be building up to the First Order that has been created by Palpatine and Snoke, whatever you want to call them. In that very same episode, we get to see the cloned bodies in the laboratory that the Empire built. Now, our first instinct is to think that this is a direct tie into Snoke, who was confirmed to be a clone in The Rise of Skywalker, and that may be a good thought since Snoke's theme music was mixing in with the dark side music when this scene happened. We won't know what this scene really means until we get further into the show and into the story, but the trajectory of the Mandalorian story is leading into exploring more about the Fallen Empire that is slowly turning into the First Order. Moff Gideon even says that he used Grogu for his Force-sensitive blood and he extracted it from the kid's body that could easily be leading into something involving the Snow clones or even Palpatine cloning himself. Now, I think one reason The Mandalorian works so well as a show is that it's tying into multiple different Star Wars stories into this one story, into this one show. Things from the Clone Wars like the Death Watch group, Bo-Katan, the Fall of Mandalore, all that comes up in the show. Same with the Rebels series. Rebels ties in really well with The Mandalorian with, yet again, Bo-Katan. You have Ahsoka, characters like Ahsoka who show up in The Mandalorian to continue their mission from Rebels, which, for her case, it's finding Ezra and Grand Admiral Thrawn. And now we see the story of The Mandalorian expanding even more. It has three spin-off shows, The Book of Boba Fett, the Ahsoka Tano series, and Rangers of the New Republic. And now what everyone expects is that these shows will all tie into each other in some overarching story. But Rangers of the New Republic will likely heavily feature the First Order's rise to power and the transition from Empire to First Order. The Mandalorian takes place five years after Return of the Jedi, and that's 25 years before the sequel trilogy begins, meaning that the natural progression of the story would be to lead into the events of the sequel trilogy. 
even bringing in Luke Skywalker at the end of Season 2 is a direct tie-in to the sequel trilogy. Luke takes Grogu so that he can begin training to become a Jedi, and we all know what happens with Luke's temple, so that makes us as an audience question, is Grogu going to be part of that temple and part of the people who are Jedi that eventually die at the hands of Ben Solo or whoever burns down the temple, because at this point we still don't know. These may be small little nods or tie-ins we see right now, but it all seems to be building up to something. Giancarlo Esposito, who plays Moff Gideon, said that Season 3 and 4 are when we really start to get the answers for the Mandalorian series. So maybe when those seasons come out, we will see just how much the show can actually tie in to these new films. The only difference between The Clone Wars and The Mandalorian is that The Clone Wars added to the characters of the prequels. It doesn't really seem like The Mandalorian can do that since Ray, Finn, and Poe will not be featured in this series since they're all pretty much kids at this point, maybe not even born in some cases. But what The Mandalorian can do is lead into the sequel trilogy, set the foundation for the First Order to rise to power, and see what evil plans Moff Gideon has that can lead into Snoke, Palpatine, or even Grand Admiral Thrawn himself. We may not love the sequel trilogy, but The Mandalorian can make the plot and the story of those movies make a lot more sense than what we have seen so far from the movies alone. But only time will tell how much the series actually ties into the sequel trilogy. I just want to talk about how I think this new show can do what The Clone Wars did, but for a different trilogy. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you think that The Mandalorian will save the sequels and lead into that story, or will it go its own direction that feels separate from the sequel films? Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like or a comment because it does help out the channel. If you enjoy Star Wars only, become an OnlyFan and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the latest news in Star Wars. I'm Star Wars Only. I will see you all next time, and may the Force be with you always.